All right, you guys, so I actually got dolled up today, put my makeup on because we are about to share our birth story on YouTube. And I honestly just wanted to take some me time to do my skincare, do my makeup, feel like myself again. So it feels really good and refreshing. Baby Zoe is sleeping right now. So soundly, so sweet. <laughs> you can smell my lap. And apples are healthy. And then nutritious and so yummy. And we have baby Zoe. Yeah. Yeah, we have baby Zoe. And she's the cutest. I hold it all the time. Like I would never get I hold it mom all the time her, too. Because she's just so cute. Do you know how old she is today? Yeah. One. Three days old. Three days old? Yeah. Three days old. Max, what do you want to say to your new baby sister, Zoe? She's so cute, and I just love her so much. Then what do you want to tell baby Zoe? I'm um, going to She's so, so quiet, and she's not even fussy. Sometimes she's fussy. Sometimes she's not cute. All the time she's cute. <laughs> <laughs> not sometimes she's cute. All the time All she's the cute. Time. Yeah. Is there something you're excited to teach her how to do when she gets bigger? Swim? I think swimming is probably your guys' favorite activity. You like the water, don't you? Yes. Liv, what are you excited to teach baby Zoe how to do? Oh, the baby to come with gymnastics. What movie do you think she might like? Um, okay. um, this is me. That's the little tiny baby. This is mom. This is Biff. This is dad. And Biffy? You were a good helper too. What were you feeding me after I had the baby? A fruit. Fruit? Yeah, fruit. Oh, now I gotta have some fruit. Yeah. Okay, Biv, you're gonna have to Biv, sit in the middle. Hey, you guys, welcome back to Eat, Move, Rest. We are now officially a family of five. Wow. <laughs> I feel like the Brady Bunch in here. What <laughs> has happened to us? So funny. So. Yes, baby Zoe Soleil, our beautiful son baby, is here. She has arrived. She was born here at home on Friday, and we couldn't be more excited. Yep, so she was born two days before her due date. Mr. Max was born just hours after his due date. Liv, our little punctual baby, was born right on her due date. You are a master baby carrier and birther. I'm just gonna give Aaron credit right now. You look amazing while you're pregnant. You look amazing just days after giving birth. Aaron had been wanting to do a home birth and so it was exciting to get to do that. We know not everybody gets to and it doesn't always work out that way and it's not for everyone but it was something you worked really hard on and I'm happy that you got everything you wanted. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. We really rounded up a solid, solid birth team, and I couldn't be just more elated by how everything played out with yeah. all of them around us. Our midwife was incredible and so aligned on so many levels. Yeah. Um, she's whole foods plant based, has been for several years. She yeah. comes from three generations of midwives. She's just a strong Christian, just very wise beyond her years, and just so experienced. They even travel to Africa every year and help women there to deliver. It's just really incredible what they do and how they're providing for the community here. We're just so fortunate. We have everything in the world and more. And my biggest prayer for the last few months and, and certainly these last few weeks was like, please let this, you know, just be okay. We want a healthy baby, number one, and we want a healthy birth experience and a healthy mom, number two. And it was just great. So. Yeah feeling very fortunate about all that. Looking back on our whole team, I have Kristen to thank for recommending everyone yep. from our doula to our photo and video girl that we had here with us as well. Cool thing is everybody's coming to us. Life Song Midwifery, they came in after the birth. They cleaned the whole house. They did all the laundry. They picked up brewed tea. I feel like we're, we've so been taken care of. and Kind of feels like great. the way things used to be or the way they're supposed to supposed be, maybe. To, so yeah. yeah, we just felt very pampered. And we should I, maybe dive into like how the day played yeah. out a little bit. Yeah. Because there was this 
I guess the full moon this month was called the pink moon. One yeah. of my friends in Hawaii told me she's very like tapped in and just like earthy <laughs> and pregnant also with her seventh pregnancy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and do any day now as well. Um, so anyways, she was telling me, yep, the, watch out for that full moon. And I thought, yep, Max wow. was born on a full moon this time around. I remember looking out the window and I was having contractions. It was Wednesday night. Yeah, I was too. I looked yeah. at the full moon because I remember doing it with Max. When Max was born on the full moon, I, rem I yeah. seriously remember that moment looking at the full moon. So I called my mom and I was like, I think it might be happening, but I'm getting really anxious. I remember getting kind of like clammy palms and like really trembly and anxious and right. I don't know I was just nervous because I told Dusty this whole time I just really want a daytime birth I just feel more like right. grounded and I want things to be bright and colorful and I just want to feel like confident and I feel like I'd feel that more in the daytime so of course I was getting kind of a little bit nervous because everything was happening right before bedtime. Yeah. But went to bed that night and I remember having like kind of a crampy feeling the this whole night. This is Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday. And then Thursday woke up and everything kind of just like tapered off. Like quit. Random contractions here and there like throughout the day. But I had a midwife appointment, a prenatal chiropractic appointment. I was going to mm -hmm. cancel everything, but yeah. everyone's like, just keep doing your thing. So yeah. I did and everything kind of tapered off, like I said and then slept great Thursday night, and then woke up Friday, and I feel like that's when things started You were kind to... of frustrated. Yeah. You kind of had a bad mood. After my appointments, they had both told me that that's called prodromal labor, yeah. and a handful of like followers on Instagram as well said, oh, mine went on for days, and then you know it could go on for weeks, and that really like stressed me out, and yeah. just dropped my confidence level down a few notches because I was just like, I am so ready. Right. Puts you on pins and needles when you don't know right. what to expect when, especially because our and team was going to be coming from an hour's drive north and south. Yeah. Friday morning, I was like, yeah. Dusty's like, well, let's just go for a walk. And then yeah. we like started walking and I like stopped every time I like felt a little contraction. Right. And then I started to realize, I was like, I'm gonna open this contraction timer app yeah. and start to track things. And they were about two or three minutes apart, but not very strong and not very long. So yeah. called my midwife and she's like, yeah, that's not really active labor yet. Wait right. till they're, you know, like 311 or 411. And then so. again on the phone, she was like, this could be days, even yeah. a couple of weeks. And so Erin was like mad. She was <laughs> like, no, it's not going to be. And we were sitting at the table and or maybe you went out and sat by the pool yep. with the kids. The kids were outside. So I went and sat in the sun, went and walked in the grass, picked some flowers like <laughs> I do every day on my daily flower forage. And then when I came inside and I was like, well, maybe I'll just, you know, go about my work on my computer. And we prepped the YouTube video and I yep. was like even more frustrated. And Dusty was like, like your attitude isn't going to help things either though. Right. And I was like, yeah, but it's just like tapering off again and I'm getting anxious. And I was like, maybe I need to get up and move and like vacuum the house. And that's when it really kicked up is when I started vacuuming. Like yeah. every time I would have a contraction, then I would have to stop and like lean over to the side right. to like ease the intensity and a I little like, bit. I, I could tell I was kind of not acting like nothing was different because I didn't want to like get in the way, but I could tell things were picking up. And so I'm like, just keep moving. And then when I went to the bathroom, it was like, as soon as I sat on the toilet, like things got really intense. And yeah. it's just cause our bodies know, like you basically get rid of whatever is in you when you're sitting. And they yeah. say that that could really like kick things up when you're in labor. But I think I was still in denial too, because I was like, eh, it's just going to go away again. Yeah. But then I finally, like a few minutes later, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to text my doula first because she was like, well, you know, typically the doula can show up first before the midwife and kind of just help you through the day. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I think you better come then. Yeah. And then I texted the same to the photo video girl. And as soon as I did that, then I was, it was, I was on. like, yeah, it was such a like, mental shift as soon as I decided in my mind like let's do this then yeah. my body followed suit yeah and I think that's honestly why all of all three births have been so like on time basically yeah. is because it is such a mental game and right. I prepped with all three through like hypnobirthing and literally visualizing the day playing out right 
every single morning in bed i would like plug into my earbuds and listen to these tracks yeah. and do my breath work and envi envision like this you had this plan yeah like a daytime yeah sunshiny birth yeah so i laid down on the bed even though i was concerned that was going to slow things down a little bit again i was like this is just what i feel like in tune and in sync with doing right now so i'm going to do it so i plugged in my tracks laid down on the bed and sure enough they got more and more intense and then my mom called and like kind of interrupted my um zen mm -hmm. hypnobirthing yeah but it was okay because i had been trying to get a hold of her and I told her like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. Yeah. And it was like hard to talk to her at that point. Hung up, got back onto my tracks. And then I think- I kept checking on you and I like didn't want to like touch you or it's like I wasn't aware, I wasn't sure if you were sleeping or not. And so I like kind of like touched your foot <laughs> one time <laughs> to see if you were like awake and, and you were, but you were super chill. So I just kind of kept like cleaning and prepping and, and stuff like that. I think I was putting food together for the kids. Yep. And, but it was super chill. Like it was so nice to kind of be like, Erin has her gals back there, like attending to her. Yeah, they had showed up. Yeah. And it, things were intensifying at that point too. Yeah. Just, I was really focusing on my breath, but I remember every time, like I was laying on my left side and every time the contraction would get like intense, Allie would like push down on my hips, I think yeah. for like counter pressure. Yeah. And at first I was like, cringe like oh i don't know if this is good but then i like just she would she kept going like relax right here yeah relax your shoulders and like it was it took every ounce of my being to then follow suit and relax my body but like yeah. her subtle cues were like definitely much needed and appreciated and then right. i got so hot and flushed and all i could think was like yeah. This birthing pool situation, I don't know how that's and gonna make me feel hot, good. And I was putting hot, hot water. So I started there like, Dusty, you need to fill the tub. I'm like, all right. And then you guys got like cold, ice cold towels and it yeah. was like a lifesaver on my neck. Yeah. And then the contractions and like the counter pressure just kept going on for like maybe seven of those, I would say. Yeah. And then I was like, I just feel like I need to get up and go poop. And they're like, she's gonna have this baby before the pool's ready. Right. Wait, it's time. And so like, I just kind of got more on like all fours on the bed and like, I did not push. That was my one thing this time around. After taking a couple of birth courses, I took the Christian hypnobirthing course and then the pain-free birth course. Yeah. And they both really, really stressed, like your body will push the baby out. Right. If you push That's too hard. That's what contractions hard, yeah. are, right? It's yep. like the, your uterus is this big muscle and we learned all about the muscles that go this way and this way. And, and then the fundus builds up here and then it like, pushes the baby down and out. Right. And like, if you push too hard or too soon, that's when tearing happens. Yeah. So like, I definitely experienced that whole ring of fire sensation, but this time, like, yeah. I truly just like, focused on my breath and like slow and steady, slow and steady. And just like, rather than just trying to like grunt the baby out, yeah. because I knew it was like, I felt so like, in the moment for the pushing part that that was almost like the least difficult i think the contractions oh. were more difficult it was so it was unbelievably chill and i caught the baby she was like dusty do you want to catch the baby i was like yep for sure <laughs> and aaron like you were just chill you were just there my eyes were closed pretty much the whole time yeah. with a few winks open but i feel like i kind of lost got a little on like rockier yeah. ground every time I would open my eyes. So I just yeah. kept them closed and I kept doing this um, breathing in for four, out for seven, in for four, out for seven. Yeah. And it was like, it all just came back to breath. And because like it happened so quickly, let's see, like the whole day, like I said, was like pretty rhythmic with like two, two and three minute apart contractions that were really mild. Yeah. And then it kicked up around like three o'clock. Yeah. And she was born at 5, 10 p.m. Right. So, so when I looked at my hours, phone, not even a couple when hours. my mom called, it was like 4.45. Wow. And yeah. I'm like, so it was only between 4.45 and 5, 10 p.m. Everyone showed up. Yeah. I started pushing and the baby was out. So yeah. like I had this list of things prepared as far as like, possible essential oils or smells that I might want. And I said I wanted like flowers in the <laughs> birthing pool and yeah. Um, but I looked back and in hindsight, I had also told myself this could very easily be a three hour labor considering Liv was six hours and Max was 12. I'm like, right. it could be cut in half again. So I was prepared for it to be daytime yep. and swift 
and to just focus on my breath. I grabbed Liv because the kids were out here watching a movie because uh, I kept having them check on mom and it was kind of a dramatic moment. And then Kristen was like, do you want to catch the baby? So I set Liv down and she watched the whole thing. So like Dusty caught the baby and handed her through, through. as he was saying. I like had to go around your leg and yeah. then around your arm and hold it up. I remember you saying, "Another, it's another girl, as yeah. I was reaching to grab her. Yeah. So I feel like it was like the perfect team moment. It was cool. It was perfect. And yeah. like, again, going back to the fact that I was so overheated, I don't think I would have even wanted to get in the pool or the tub, whatever you call no. it. Yeah. Like if it was full, like yeah. I was way too hot and it the was, cold compress felt so good. It worked out so well and it was just amazing. And then again, and then right after that, the gals showed up, they, they changed sheets, they changed the towels, they did all the things. I think they all left at like eight ish. Yeah. So not that long. Yeah. Not that long, but yeah. long enough to like make sure that I was like not gonna hemorrhage which was right. like, honestly like my biggest fear whether at home or hospital right but like i knew it was it wouldn't have mattered where we were at because the midwives like she had everything like medical that the hospitals had that we could possibly need but then also like all of the herbal alternatives for everything too so i felt like i was yeah doubly in good hands it was the best of both worlds and, it was yeah. the best of both but but really, it was just really cool. I, people kept telling me, they were like, oh, a home birth is like the most amazing thing. And like these women, of course, kept saying that it's like the best day of my life, all these things. And I'm like, really? Like having birth, like best, like at home? Like I didn't get it, but it was a really cool experience. It was super cool to be here in your space, but to do something so like profound, you know, yeah. for you, obviously, but as like a team, it was cool and to have the kids and live especially she's such a girly girl she wants to get married and have babies and do all these things she's always talking about it already so yeah. to, for her to watch Aaron you know have a baby and yeah there was blood and there were things that she saw that um, she was fine with you I'm know? so amazed because I thought yeah. maybe I was like well Max is older so maybe he'll understand more that like mom's yeah. gonna be okay he wasn't that into and like it. <laughs> he's into like scary movies and he's okay <laughs> with like blood and guts but yeah he, he was like eh. I think he was kind of a little bit skittish so he was out here drawing our family picture and Liv was right. in there watching and Afterwards, she came in with Allie, our doula, and yeah. they brought me fruit, and she was like hand feeding me strawberries as I was laying in bed holding the baby. Yeah, so and Max precious. brought his picture in, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect and so sweet. And I was just so excited to get to set that example for the kids right. of like what birth can be. The other thing I find hilarious is that they were all like within like a quarter of an inch length. Like they all three kids were the same length, basically and the same weight basically like yeah like so. seriously the same yeah. pretty much the same exact size except max had a way bigger head which oh yeah it definitely felt bigger especially being my first birth <laughs> and then yeah. Liv and this one had the exact Liv and zoe had the exact same head circumference yep and i was like i didn't mind it being an inch smaller <laughs> right right for sure right after like i journaled everything so that is just something I've done with all three kids that has really been special yep. to be able to look back on and compare. And yeah, I just, I mean, labor's not easy. Having a baby's not easy, but I definitely feel like things just get more aligned the more you do it, I guess. It was just yeah. so special. I'm proud of us. I'm just gonna say it here in front of everybody. I'm proud of us for doing the cool things that we see done in the world and then just doing them mm -hmm. from hosting the retreats, taking the kids with us, making the choice, the hard decision to move across the country. And I want you guys to be inspired by us too, too because we're just a couple of people from Nebraska that have decided we're gonna live the coolest life ever. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have all the kids, but we're gonna take the trips and we're gonna build the cool houses and do all the things. and figure out how to pay for it all along the way and and we've been able to so kudos to to you and i for doing so much fun stuff most mostly kudos to you for everything you've done and continue to do and the most important thing is that now we've got a new special family member zoe mm -hmm. which by the way her name zoe zoe means life or in the, the biblical sense it means eternal life 
and soleil is French for sun, so life sun. Yeah. Felt very fitting. And of course, Erin has her in this sunny yellow swaddle with a little bow. Girls are fun. I'm excited to have another girl, even though Liv is Henri. She's a lot of work. <laughs> I had a she's talk. taken on her middle child vibes. Oh, she's been a middle child before she was even born. <laughs> but Max and I had a talk. He said, I kind of wanted a brother. And I'm like, I know. But he ha he's been holding her nonstop. And he's, he keeps saying, I just love her. I could hold her for forever. And she's so <laughs> sweet. And then we had a talk. I'm like, we're the, we're the men of the house. We're the protectors now. We, we've got a big job to do. So anyway, we're all excited. We're all very much in love. And yeah. Excited to share more with you guys in the next couple of weeks, but also kind of take it take it a little bit easy for mostly for mom and baby's sake. And yeah, stay tuned and maybe we'll do a live on Instagram or, or something. And then of course, if you guys haven't already, join the membership. We go live there every week and we've made some amazing friends and are doing weekly challenges and stuff like that. that I know that a lot of our followers love that extra interaction time with us and, and we love it too so go check out the membership if you haven't already um and we'll see you next week yep and stay connected with us on instagram as well we're yep. always posting fun family pictures on there we answer all of our dms so that's a great place to stay super connected with us too yep but like dusty said if you want the inside scoop the membership is where it's at <laughs> totally more pictures and baby footage to come much love you guys peace Bye.